Hey y'all, Josh here from 2C Supplies, and of course, up to my right here, we have our special guest, Ivan LaCroix from DIY Details. Awesome. Um, so we're gonna get straight to it because there are three amazing pads in the DIY detail, uh, detail line that we really wanna talk about. We've been getting these questions quite a bit on when to use it, how to use it, and um, what are some of the uh, best speed settings on the pads, things like that. So we have Ivan to answer that, and uh, we're gonna present a few things that have also come up from previous questions. So Ivan, um, let's go through the pads real quickly and what we have here. So. Right. Did you want to start with the uh, wool pad here? Yeah, we'll start with the most Perfect. aggressive one. So this is our wool cutting pad. And when we say cutting, the gold standard polish is definitely pad adaptable. Yeah. So with this, you can cut 1000 grit sanding marks quite easily yeah. and get a nice smooth finish. On a harder clear, on a 15 millimeter machine, mm -hmm. well, you can cut and finish with it. Fantastic. But definitely on a 21 millimeter machine, it is your most aggressive pad it will cut better than most rotaries with a wool pad. Fantastic. Uh, could you maybe explain to me a little bit on how this is able to finish uh, uh, as well? Because the idea that most wool pads are going to create a little bit of a haze or things like that on the paint. And so how is this able to give you that perfect finish? So this is a purple foamed wool pad and they're made by Lake Country. They're the only ones that have this yep. material. But uh, with the fact that it's a lot more flexible because of the foam interface, it's going to follow the contours. Right. So less pressure points means less chances of marring, things like that. With the short nap of the wool, we're not getting those long fibers that are slinging and flinging around yeah. and getting that marring. So no, uh, finishes quite well, depending on the paint system. So if you have a soft paint, it is going to leave a bit of micro marring. Perfect. Awesome. And of course, um, if you do want to approach uh, paint polishing with maybe a one step kind of process or you want something that's a little bit easier or you're starting off, they do also have not only the wool pad, but they also have the yellow uh, polishing yeah. waffle pad. So the yellow waffle pad is definitely our go to pad. So if you only have one pad in your arsenal, this is the one you need. Yeah. It is going to cut, it is going to finish. Right. And because of the waffle structure, it is a very forgiving pad. Right. So it's gonna follow the contours of the vehicle a lot better than a flat pad. Yeah. You don't have to bend the pad in different or ways. Or tilt the machine, yeah, tilt and, the machine. And, and do James Bond all. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's gonna follow it. The waffle structure also cools the surface down. Right. Cooler pad means less chance of dust easier wipe off and better results. Awesome. Now, um, as I mentioned earlier, I do use that uh, quite a bit for a one step. Yep. So um, if someone were to use this as a dedicated cutting pad, that's right. definitely not the way to go. It can cut, it does cut. Yeah. But like I said, if you have the choice of having multiple pads, go for the wool to cut, Right. but the foam to finish. Okay. And you know, if, like I said, if you're only Having one pad though, this is the one to have because it will cut, it will finish, uh, works on all machines. So rotary as well as DA. Yeah, it's a good all rounder. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. And of course, up next, uh, you might have seen it on social media or anything like that, maybe on our Instagram and DIY Details Instagram, red jeweling pad over here. Right. And um, Ivan, I don't know much about the red jeweling pad. Right. Maybe so, you can expand a little bit on that. Yeah, so design this specifically to finish with a rotary. I love finishing with the rotary, it's yeah. how I've always finished. But the pads on the market were good, yeah. but I always felt we could do better. And this is the result of that. So compared to most foam pads, it's a lot thicker. Mm -hmm. So as you can notice. Right here, guys? Yeah. Can you see that? So it's one inch thick or 25 millimeters thick versus 15. Uh, the other aspect of that, we have a really deep waffle for, for cooling. I see it. For that. Uh, aspect of it and finally you know the center hole as well right. for cooling then the foam itself yeah the foam is super soft it's very soft pliable touch, yeah. but very resilient as well okay so it's gonna again once once again follow that surface with the thickness we're reducing pressure points so yes. we're getting a much smoother finish less chance of holograms yeah and the waffle surface like every other one it cools it gives you a better flow better flexibility and a much better user experience. Perfect. Can you use this uh, as a start when you do polish your vehicle? Let's say you're, you're not wanting a cut, but you do just want to go for that pop, that gloss. Right. Is this something that you can uh, you can opt in besides just the yellow uh, yeah, waffle pad? Yeah, definitely. Uh, awesome. It is a 
best termed an enhancement pad. Enhancement pad. So Perfect. it's not going to do any cutting per se, but yeah. it will enhance, it will bring out gloss. Can be used on a DA as well. Nice. Now, I've designed it for the rotary, okay. uh, but on the DA, especially a short stroke machine like an 8 or a 15 millimeter stroke, yep. it's going to do a great job as well. And does it, go, does it work well with a 15 and a 21 as well? A 21, it will work. Yeah, uh, but depending on the paint. So if your paint is very soft on a 21, right. because of the thickness and the softness of the pad, you might end up with additional micro marring because of the pad. Yeah, I, I, I assume you're going to get quite a bit of play too, right? Yes. In, in the actual movement of the polisher, I can right. kind of, I can kind of picture yeah. that. Yeah, definitely. So, um, is there anything else that you might have wanted to add uh, about the uh, the three uh, pads on the DIY lineup? Yeah, speed. Speed. So, speed and pressure. Uh, when you're polishing, don't use any pressure. Let the machine do the work, not you. Got it. And as far as speed, for the rotary drilling pad, on your rotary, speed one. Not two, not three. Keep it as low as it will go. Nice. The lower your rotary will go, the better your finish is going to be. Awesome. And speeding it up is not going to get you more cut. It's actually going to reduce the cut. When you generate heat, you reduce cut. Yes, that's so, right. Uh, with the gold standard uh, yellow waffle pad, Basically, if you're using a DA somewhere around speed three, speed three, you just okay. want to maintain backing plate rotation. Right. You don't need any more than that. As long as you're maintaining backing plate rotation, you don't need to go faster than that. And with Amazing. the wool pad, same deal. Uh, you don't want to go any faster than speed three, four at the very most, except one little exception. We have a technique called the five-five-five method. The five, yes, I've heard of the five-five-five right. five before. Yep. So you have a deeper scratch. Yep. We're actually not wanting to remove that scratch. We're wanting to round over the edges of the scratch so we don't see it anymore. Right. Because if we're removing the scratch, the scratch is 20 microns deep. We're exactly. removing 20 microns of clear coat. And you're gonna, you're gonna be burning. You're basically gonna go be going all the way down to with the bottom of the scratch. Right. right. Exactly. Yeah. So by rounding over the corners, we don't visually see it anymore. It's still there. If we have that you know, bright light off in a corner, right. yeah, we'll still see it. But the 555 method is speed five on a DA, yep. roughly five pounds of pressure or 2.2 kilograms, and uh, for roughly five seconds. Yep. You want to do that, have a lot of pressure, but stop before you create heat. Yes, that makes sense. Yeah. And that's going to round over those edges, give you a nice finish, and then you can just smooth it off right. the regular way. And your, your, your arm speed would also be very slow, especially with the 555, five, right? With the 555 five method, uh, stay still even. Stay that, still, right? Yeah, oh, okay. for that matter. The other thing is we suggest highly to have a clean, damp pad all the time. Okay. So a dry pad, uh, you know, with the gold standard system, we're spraying the polish on. So that is one advantage. Instead of having three or four drops on the pad, yeah. we now have thousands of little drops. Yeah. But with a damp pad, not wet, just damp, yeah. uh, what, what is happening is your pad gets a lot softer, yeah. so it's gonna contour much better, and now you have no dry buffing ever. Right. And everything, uh, everything is um, spread out evenly. Right. Right. And uh, I believe uh, uh, having a little bit of a damp pad can also improve a little bit in the uh, polishing performance in terms of cut, correct? Cut and finish. Cut and so finish. So it has advantages everywhere. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, it runs cooler, cuts better, yep. finishes better, and your pad is easier to clean, easier to maintain. So if you keep it damp, you're not going to get the accumulation of clear coat built into the pad. Right. Um, actually, I, mean, I actually wanted to uh, re rewind a little bit because I do remember seeing a video on the DIY Detail channel, uh, on the YouTube uh, Instagram channel, yep. and I did notice uh, you talked about uh, the red jeweling pad uh, being able to do one entire vehicle with just one red jeweling pad. Oh, definitely. Uh, 15 right? 15 or 20 vehicles, actually. Really? Yeah. Because I... So, most, uh, so some detail, most details, and myself as well, we're kind of used to using multiple pads for, for one vehicle. Correct. Uh, could you further explain on, uh, on what the difference is between that? So it comes down to how you use the pad, and that is the okay. pad washer. So with the pad washer, after every section, you clean your pad. Yeah. So never put clean polish on a dirty pad. Right. And you've polished single stage paint before. I have. Okay, so let's say the, the car is blue. Right. 30 seconds into polishing, your pad is blue. blue. It's going to be blue. What do you want to do? You want to immediately clean your Get pad. Get rid of it, uh, blow it out, or anything like that. But right. I know blowing out is... Uh, Not good for foam so, pads. Yeah. 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 Uh, 
Uh, but you want to clean your pad, and that's where the pad washer comes in. Right. When you're polishing clear coat, you're getting just as much transfer onto your pad, yep. just you don't see it. Yeah. So a dirty pad does not give you the performance. So some people that are using four pads to do the whole car, Right. well, at the start of their, you know, let's say they divide the car into four. Yep. At the start, their pad is working perfectly. By the time they get grass, yeah, progress. it gets worse and worse and worse. Exactly. So cleaning it after every section, never put clean polish on a dirty pad. Your pads are going to last longer. Your performance is going to be better. Yeah. Your finish is going to be better. And you're not going through pads. That is amazing because uh, that's all about efficiency too. If you could just use one pad instead of having to switch over, yes, you're going to be cleaning them, but that's also really effective. Yes. And it's definitely going to save quite a bit of time, right? And it's going to make things much easier as well. Exactly. Um, we, I know for a fact that we're going to have uh, questions about uh, the pad's um, durability. If we were to do uh, one vehicle with one pad, would, yeah. this, uh, would this hold up to that kind of uh, rotation and spin? Definitely, yeah. Yeah? It's okay. designed for that. Okay. Uh, even the pad manufacturers, well, all our pads are made by Lake Country Manufacturing. Yeah. So Lake Country Manufacturing is also the one that makes the best pad washer in the market, the L LC4000, yeah. Lake Country System 4000. They are the ones that came up with the pad washer because it extends the life of their pads. Yeah. So they look better as well. But at the same time, you don't need to be switching pads out five, six. And some people use one pad per panel, so they'll have 12 pads to do a yeah. car. And then they have the drudgery of cleaning them afterwards. Right. Well, if you're using the pad washer as you're going along, your pad always stays clean. Yep. You're not ripping your Velcro apart. Yeah meaning your pads last longer, your backing plate lasts longer, and you're not wasting that time. And the time to wash the pads is actually very minimal, first of all. Secondly, when you're washing the pads, what happens is you're actually increasing the cut of the pad, therefore yeah. your performance is faster. So it, it's actually saving you time. That's right. And so um, with everything, uh, with the wool uh, waffle and the... Um and the uh, red jeweling pad. Right. Uh, if you do decide to want to use them individually during your job, you can still do that, right? Oh, yeah. You can still go in with a wool if you want to do a, 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 just a cut by itself, and then you follow up with a yellow and a red. Yeah. Because we're going to have different scenarios where people might want to do that. Exactly. Yeah, so that's yeah, going to be your, that's Three stages be right. might be too much. So if you're starting with the wool, you'll either finish with the yellow or the red, not right. the yellow, then the red. That's yeah. going a little overboard. All right. Yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, there you have it. That's everything that you need to know about DIY details, um, polishing pad lineup, the wool, the yellow uh, waffle pad, and the red jeweling waffle pad as I, well. Actually, one little thing. Yes. If you like applying ceramic gloss, that red pad on a DA is spectacular for applying ceramic gloss. Really? Yes. So, so it, it's it's also a, it's also a finishing pad. You can use any protection product that you yeah, can. Yeah, exactly. With, maybe with a wax as well and a glaze. As yeah, well. you know, a wax nice. will work great as well. Fantastic. Well, the more I learn, the more I want to try it now. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, exactly. So, um, there you go, folks. Uh, that's basically what you uh, are going to get with the DIY detailed pads. They're very versatile, easy to use, and as you heard uh, from Ivan himself, um, they're going to be very user friendly and you can use them for every scenario. So make sure you head on over to tocsupplies.ca and you get them now because they sell pretty quick. All right? Once again, Ivan, thank you for uh, thank educating you, us and uh, hopefully we have you soon again. See you in the next one. Peace.